Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're looking at a really cool tool for creating tile sets and for creating maps using those tiles. It's called Tile Setter, and the one magical feature of Tile Setter, the one thing that it really appeals to me on, is it makes the otherwise mystical concept of auto tiles or wang tiles accessible to mere mortals. These are tiles that make... Um, Transitioning between multiple tile sets really easy, but they're hard to understand sometimes. So that's what Tile Setter really simplifies. Here you can see it is available up on Steam. There was a recent release, so we'll get back to the details of it in just a few seconds. But you see, it is available on Steam, it is on all the major platforms, and it is about 12 bucks US. Uh, I'm actually going to be illustrating a version I got from the developer. This is uh, 2.0.0. Point something. It's got a slight tweak to the UI. You have to go into the beta stream on Steam if you want want to grab this version. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let us take a look. So this is tile set itself. We can reorganize our maps and our, our divisions and our areas accordingly, like so. And up here is where you create your tiles. Out here is where you create your maps. Here is the new layering functionality, and we'll show the rest of this in action in just a second. Now, if you're thinking this is a traditional tile editing software, you're going to be wrong. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is we'll take a look at the process right now. So I can zoom in, and that's what I've done. You can see things a little bit better. So now we're going to need a tile. Here we are. This is paint.net, a free uh, graphics application. I'm going to just stick with 16 by 16 pixel tiles. So we're going to come in here. There is our tile, like so. Let's get rid of the background. So control A, delete everything. And now we are going to create a tile. So let's make this one just say dirt. So come on up here and let's grab a dirt-ish color. I guess that's kind of dirt-like. And then Boom. All right. So there we go. We have our dirt tile. I'm not going to save it or do anything like that with it. I'm just going to go ahead and go control A, copy, and then we're going to head back over to tile setter and then a control V. So now we have a tile. You see, we've got the base tile details over here. Now what we can do with that tile is create auto tiles out of it. And how do I do that? Really simply. We can right click and we can either do a build borders using blob or Wang. Now, Wang tile sets are, you've probably seen them in other editors. I actually find Blob a little bit easier to work with, so let's just do that. And then, boom. So now what it's done is it's created all the various different angles or aspects that this tile could interact with other potential tiles. So now let's go ahead and create a transitionary tile. So we're just going to head on back over to paint.net. I'm going to create a new tile here, 16 by 16 once again. Uh, this time, I'm going to once again zoom in. We'll control A and delete it background so we've got transparencies going on. Get my trusty paintbrush and let's make this one grass. All right, so there we go. We got grass. Let's just add some grass layer here. And yeah, so we got some opacity going on at the top, a little bit of transparency going on at the bottom. And yeah, we're good to go. So now we have a grass transition layer. I'm just going to go ahead. We'll copy that and then head on over here and I'll pick somewhere else in this tile set area just click there and we'll paste in so now we have this transitionary tile as well so now what we're going to do is we're going to head on back over to this originally generated one and I'm going to grab this one see this white dot 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 scissored edge there well what we can do now is do composition on it so I can say the source and I'm going to go ahead and we will pick our transition tile and see what it's done? Is it's boom, it's made everything out, even kind of beveled off the edges for us. So now we have a grass to dirt transitional layer. We can do that with each of the sides. Once again, we can come here and go, and then boom. And what you might find, we may not want that gap that's going on right there. See that there's a little bit of a the darkness there? Well, this can be changed by setting the cutoff amount. So we can come in here and change that to say three. And there it goes. Looks a little bit better right here. We can do the same thing. Three. You've also got the ability to flip, flip in various different orientations to make your tiles look better. So we got the, the three cutoff makes things work a little bit better in this case. Let's go to the right. Again, we'll pick this one, grab that guy, set that guy to three. And then down at the bottom, again, green, three, and done. So now you have a nice set of transitionary tiles. We could have also taken, again, that original tile right there. I don't know if I can do it from here. Let's try if I can do it from right inside. No, I can't. All right, so I'm gonna do a control C on that guy. We head down here and do a control V, and we can do the exact same thing with water if we so wish. So we could come in here, once again, drop in 16 by 16, boom. Control A, delete the background. I zoom that guy in, and let's do a coastline here. So, all right, so there is our, actually make that a little bit further in. There is our water transition tile, like so. And then once again, pop it over, drop it here. I'll put them all in a line for my, my uh, feed tiles over here. We'll grab this guy, we will generate border blobs once again, and exact same process. You can come in here, and you can create a set of water transitions. 
And yeah, that's kind of the idea behind it. And you can really easily, again, you're going to want to move it a bit because you're getting those gaps in. So once again, you come in here, change this down to there. It transitions a little bit better or whatever. But now you've got these two really cool tile sets. We could do a completely new set of tiles as well. So let's come in here and we will create water. So get rid of that. Zoom that in. I'm content with my water like so. All right. So there's my water tile. Just come on back over here. Drop that guy in. And then now we can just go ahead and do a generate. All right, so there you go. So you can see that is how easy it is to various, make various different tile sets. So I can start here and I've got my water in the world. Come down here and we're now into the map editing side of things. And I can call this layer, uh, we'll call it the water layer. So we could go ahead and basically start painting into the water layer like so. And done. So now I can switch over to my water to dirt transitions. And actually I should have had a, a dirt to water to make this work right. But as you can see, I've got dirt and then at the edges, we got the water coming out like so, but then I could switch into my grass mode and you're going to see it, it pulls in and interacts with. So as it makes sense, it fills it out. Nice auto tiling support makes your map creating process really simple once you have set up all of your auto tiles to work right. And as you saw, the process of actually going ahead and creating and populating these tiles is really straightforward. Now, another option you've got is you've got the ability to actually uh, so come down here, I pick one of my, so let's grab this guy, go back here, transitionary. I can click here and we can actually come up here to the image source and I could swap this guy out. So if I said I wanted grass, I wanted uh, some other kind of grass. So I'll come back here, uh, let's go back to my grass transition. Let's say I wanted to have, uh, I don't know, some br brownish bits in there too. I could do that, basically come back here, clipboard it out, drop that out, and then everything that used that tile will now have the new version in place. So you can do a, a, a macro find and replace basically by changing out the image source. Everything that then used that image will be updated um, accordingly. And that was basically, I just, you got copy it out to here. So now that I've got the source, I could come back in here, create a new thing out of it, and then paste. So there is our tile source brought in. And then once you've made your changes, Oops, that's not what I wanted. That's what I want. So let's throw some red in there for no apparent reason. Again, you can come back here and paste and replace. And there you see it immediately updates there, but it also updates on your map over here. On top of that, we now have the ability to create multiple layers. So this could be, for example, a cloud layer, pretty straightforward. So let's come back over here, uh, create a new tile. All right, so this is just gonna be my pixel skills at their finest. All right, there we go. So paintbrush. There we go. So we got a transparent cloud going on here. Very exciting stuff. All right, there we go. So now we have our transparent cloud that's going to be populated in our cloud layer. So let's just drop that in here somewhere. So there it is. And I can create anything out of it. I'm just going to show you how layers can work on top of each other. So now we go back here and we can start drawing. So we've got the cloud layer active and I can start drawing in my clouds. So boom, boom, boom. So let's get over something you can see. So see, you've actually got transparency happening. It is on top of the one layer. You can reorg the layers like so. So now it is behind the layer because there is no opacity going on. And if you decide that you don't like your clouds or whatever, uh, you can basically just straight out delete that layer and you are good to go. So that is in a nutshell what Tile Setter is all about. Now where it really kind of shines is what I can do at any particular time. You probably saw this in the past is I can click, um, where'd it go? Right here. And I can export and I can export my tile set out to a number of different formats, including Game Maker Studio 2, uh, the default game engine, uh, GMS 2.3, so I'm just going to file format change there, and also to Godot, uh, as well as the Unity game engine. So if you're working in one of the more popular 2D game engines out there, you have Unity, Godot, Game Maker, and Default all supported out of the box. So basically, let's say I, had, I went ahead and created uh, the Godot export. This is going to uh, create an asset for me. So let's go ahead here. Um, Godot out like so. And my tile set like that. And that will now be available. My, 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 where did you go? Hmm. Okay, that is definitely a little bit of a glitch, but I am using a developer build for some reason, unless I screwed up, I very much might have, but it put it into a folder called Godot out my tile set. 
Uh, so that would actually not be here where I wanted it, uh, but here. And there you go. And there you have the tile set, the import file, and the, the resource file that Godot needs. So really all you need to do is create a new map inside of the Godot engine and you have a tile set ready to go. And if you've used tile sets in Godot, you kind of probably know that that's one of the weaker points of it right now. So having this take care of the work for you is definitely a nice feature. So now you have a set of auto tiles ready to go in your uh, editor of choice, really quite a cool little tool. So if you're interested in checking it out, let's head on back over to the webpage. It's available up on Steam, as I said, for about 12 bucks, uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux. I am looking right now at the 2.00 beta. Um, so if you want to check that out, you do have to enter the beta stream. So just right click your install, say betas, and then enroll in it. It's not much involved in that. Um, also, it is available up on itch.io. You can see it's $12.99 USD. Hey, the Canadian dollar is getting better and better. I like that. Uh, so here you can see a little bit more details of it. Um, you, you so kind of saw what most of what we thought saw in action here. You can create smart tiles in action, create automatic compositions between the fringes and the edges like we saw earlier on. You can customize flip them, move them, and so on. There's a map editor built in, and you can export out to all kinds of game engines, including now the default engine as well. Also, you can bring out custom into something like the JSON format. So if you have your own uh, game engine you want to import the tiles for, uh, you can do that as well. Uh, there is a light version available, uh, but it does not have the exporting. Uh, but if you want to check out the workflow, see if this works for you, uh, do try the, the light version. Uh, it's available here. It's also available over on Steam as a download. So if you want to check this guy out, but you don't want to like, fork out your 10 bucks, uh, there is a light version. Again, just be aware, uh, no map editing and no uh, export out to those engines. And, and for a lot of cases, I think what most people will be using this for is to create the auto tiles. And it is just, well, you saw the workflow. It basically, if you find yourself creating auto tiles and you think that this would save you 10 bucks off the process, it's a worthwhile pickup. If you don't, it's not. It really, that kind of is the crux of what is involved here. Uh, then we got the 2.0 release. This was released just last week. Uh, some details on actually redeeming it on uh, Steam are available here. Uh, I will link that down below if you're interested in what is actually new in this release. Uh, we've got full change log here. Uh, big thing here is they added the fold and JSON there. Uh, a number of things I've had edited on, on the basics of the, um, the process itself, the workflow, etc. Uh, but yeah, that is basically it. This is tile setter 2.0 available in beta. Uh, basically just follow the process for enabling it on steam once you've picked it up and, uh, yeah, definitely check this one out. If you're interested again, there is a light version. So if the workflow looks of interest to you, give that a shot, uh, before, you know, forking out any cash, but it's definitely one of those tools that if you're doing work in the world of auto tiling, you can definitely save enough time to justify the cost. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Let me know what you think tile setter comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.